and welcome, I'm Alas Gerajuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. On March 31st, millions of Ukrainians cast their votes in the country's presidential elections. This time, Ukraine had a record number of candidates – 39. According to the national exit poll, showman Volodymyr Zelensky, current President Petro Poroshenko and former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko are the top candidates. The Central Election Commission reported that the final results are planned to be made public by April 10th. To talk more about this, we're joined in the studio today by Gosh. Shatehi, Uker Informs correspondent to New York. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Hello, thanks for inviting. It's a pleasure to have you here. So the data from the Central Election Commission closely reflects the national exit poll that Volodymyr Zelensky comes in first, then uh, current President Petro Poroshenko and uh, former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko comes in third. How would you comment on these preliminary results? First of all, I would like to mention also the national exit poll and also the sociology the service that we had before the election because it's actually a wonder that Ukrainian sociology works fine and it actually predicted very closely the results mm -hmm. of uh, first of all it matched fully the national yeah. exit the data poll is very accurate. and the data matched also the results of the election which is actually a very hopeful and good sign because we see in many Western countries that sociology and surveys have failed to predict the uh, actual result uh, it's good because we can rely on Ukraine Ukrainian sociology. That's the first um, outcome. And before we talk about uh, percentages and kind of programs, what candidates are, who they are, uh, I would like also to mention that uh, the elections were free and they were clean, which is also not everyone predicted that. And you know that, uh, for example, Russian uh, propaganda was fueling the narrative that it will be rigged, it will be falsified, it will be uh, unfair. This has not happened, as we see, uh, which is a very good result. It means that Ukraine really uh, remains a democratic country, which um, actually respects the, where authorities respect the election and respect the choice. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we have quite a surprise uh, in Zelensky. I mean, in the, because he's far. Uh, far in front of uh, the incumbent Petro Poroshenko. Uh, we also have some surprises like, for example, Igor Smishko, who ne no one predicted that he will actually gather some 6%, but he, he did. Yeah, because and he it, it, was not popular figure. Yeah, and uh, I mean, this is explained partially by some so sociologists that maybe it's the desire of Ukrainians for the strong hand, you know, like there's still some portion of people who desire a strong hand. Um, Nevertheless, we have uh, the big outcome actually is that Yulia Tymoshenko, Yulia Tymoshenko has lost, which I think like half a year ago no one would predict because she was the leader. She she started her campaign as early as May last year. Yeah, and she, she was, was one of the first she to was, start campaign. She was leading, and I think she should be very unhappy with Zelensky who actually grabbed her votes. Mm -hmm. I think he grabbed a lot of this protest electorate from mm -hmm. her and she's she has lost the third presidential elections uh, in the row in a row yes yeah, it, it's but a there big tragedy a, i mean there was a small gap between poroshenko and timoshenko do you think that she's going to fight for these votes to recount the votes to uh, report some kind of violations because we do know that uh yulia timoshenko's block organized its own exit poll and she was insisting that she was the one who was in the second place who is in the second place and she would be the one who should compete with Zelensky in a second round. Yeah, we now see that all, more than 98% are counted and we see that the margin is around two and a half percent, which is actually um, both a big one and a small one. I mean, if it was 5%, I would say that um, there is no reason for her to fight for any, you know, like recounting of some districts or like going to courts to try to for example abolish results in some of the some of the voting polls but uh two and a half percent is still a lot and i don't think she may try to to start talking about falsifications that she wants results recounted in some parts of the country but I don't think that it's realistic that she can actually win this two and a half percent first of all and I think everyone has already moved on you know mm -hmm. because 
we have the national exit poll. I think like people mostly, the majority is has already moved on and, and accepted, accepted the fact, accepted the reality that we have uh, the incumbent president and the comedian fighting for the runoff. So mm -hmm. I don't think that if she starts now this rhetor rhetoric about the falsifications, it will just not seem very reliable and good. This is going to be an interesting fight. Um, I would like to m remind that you mentioned that elections were democratic and free, and international observers from more than. 40 countries, they do also admit that um, these, uh, the 2019 elections are finally democratic. But uh, also I would like to refer on one of your posts on Facebook, you wrote, attention, attempts to discredit the electoral process and fight against the electoral institution on the part of those who do not like their own reflection in the mirror is gaining momentum. Be careful and watch out for manipulators. What did you mean by that and who are these people that according to you do not like like their yeah. reflection in the mirror. I was referring obviously to Yulia Timoshenko. That was the day of the vote. And we saw that during the day of the vote, there were some unidentified thugs amassing near the Central Election Committee, which was kind of worrying because uh, there were hints and some information that they may be connected to Yulia Tymoshenko and she may try to protest if she doesn't like the results. But then it somehow it all vanished. So, I mean, uh, then it did not turn out to be a real problem. So there were, I think, preparations to fight you know, like for my exit poll says that I'm the winner, your exit poll says that you're the winner. But luckily we didn't see that. So mm -hmm. luckily we avoided this scenario of very close call uh, percentages which would provoke the situation of like infighting, like who's, who's the real winner, you know. Mm -hmm. So by now we see that the institution of elections is not discredited. It's, it's, it, it has really remained uh, intact. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, the turnout? What do you think about the turnout? Because uh, I remember back in 2014 when uh, the war started and uh, we had uh, the presidential elections uh, as well, um, we had around 60 percent of turnout and mostly people from the West were active. They were more active than uh, people from any other regions of Ukraine. What about this uh, elections, the 2019 ones? Yeah, we see a very high voter turnout. We see yeah. a higher voter turnout in the east and south and somewhat lower uh, amount in the, in the west. I think that uh, I made a mistake actually because I was predicting that um, Vladimir Zelensky will not be able to bring his voters to the polls. Young voters. I was sure that he is, it's a kind of it's one thing to say uh, to a sociologist uh, that I'm going to vote for Zelensky and the other thing is to come to actual polling station. Mm -hmm. But we take see take the ballot and actually It's very good that we have two rounds of elections guess. because this first round have shown that uh, his voters really do come to elections mm -hmm. and this changes the whole analysis and we cannot like you know we cannot predict that uh, it's just youngsters they will not come no that's that is his percentage mm -hmm. it's big it's shocking to many people but this but, is this but, is a new phenomenon probably yeah. for ukrainian elections because nobody expected that youngsters would actually be proactive in the elections yes we, we although have to, they were pushing in we their have campaigns to admit that on the this. zelensky campaign was really and is really very powerful very good very modern and it's really a very powerful campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, although I'm very worried about this candidate, he has not uh, yet presented much answers to many, many questions to him. He tries to play now both pro-Western electorate and the people who are not that warm about the EU and NATO. You know, he tries to avoid actually making choices. Mm -hmm. He tries not to say and not to say much or not to say anything about some really questions where you have to take a side, you have to de de define, you know, and that is because he is a he is a catch-all candidate. He tries to catch all the votes, even votes of people who are opposing each other, you know, of left and right and, and they're everyone. opposing by not the saying, system itself. By not saying anything, you know, mm -hmm. and this is really worrying because life is going to press him into these choices when if and when he becomes the president. Life is going to press him. He cannot avoid then uh, the answers to these questions. He avoids debates now. 
Which yes, is but I think he um, will have to stop avoiding debates at some point because tensions are running high. As incumbent president Petro Poroshenko called for a debate with comedian Vladimir Zelensky. Moreover, he named Zelensky Kolomoisky's puppet. Just to uh, remind the audience, uh, Kolomoisky is one of the richest oligarchs in Ukraine. And um, looks like Zelensky did accept the invitation. But at the same time, advisor to Zelensky has issued a new statement that he doesn't see any point of this yeah. debate. What do you think on this? They're changing all the time their rhetoric and their stand on this because I think they are afraid of the debates. Because obviously uh, the competence is uncomparable of the incumbent president with all his flaws. I mean, uh, I'm not here to advocate for him or say that he's the ideal president. We know perfectly over these five years what went wrong, mm -hmm. what he didn't do, what he did wrong, what uh, wrong people he brought into the team, which people he covered up. I mean, we know this all, but we also know his strengths, you know, uh, so Poroshenko is like an under microscope. We, we know him perfectly. We know what he's going to do. And Zelensky, we just don't know anything. And there are big doubts about his competences. It's yes, not about he has never, you know, had some people career. are really very angry at the moment. And some people tend to offend each other, which I think is a very wrong approach. Because we've seen in the US, we've seen in uh, the Great Britain that uh, offending this angry electorate, this protest vote actually works uh, the other way around. You know, it just uh, motivates them, it boosts them. So the more you become angry or say that they, these people are idiots, they, they don't know anything, the more they will become powerful and they will just reinstate, you know, their beliefs. So it's so very important like, for yeah. Poroshenko right now and his supporters not to offend the, this 30% of Zelensky, however wrong they may seem to them, but kind of keep Keep respect. Do you think that the debate is going to take place? Uh, I believe that they will take place because the pressure is very high very and high. there are millions of people demanding debates. Yes, and, and there will be no excuse to refuse. There is no excuse. Uh, we need to see them both and head to head, like we're head to head in this, in this studio. We have to see them head to head. We want to know, I want to know what I buy. Mm -hmm. We need to know what we buy. We need to see them face to face. I mean, this does not exclude, of course, their meetings with journalists, some kind of a hard talk uh, um, format. Of course, this would be great as well. But we need to see them face to face. We need to compare them, compare their competences, compare strengths. their strengths, compare their weaknesses. That's true. With Poroshenko, we know strengths, we know weaknesses perfectly. With Zelensky, we know nothing. Yeah, and this pretty is mysterious scary. candidate still, but leading. Well, we're still waiting for the final results to be announced by the Central Election Commission on April 10th. But it is pretty positive that Zelensky and Poroshenko are going to compete in the second round. How do you think the votes will be divided. Uh, you mean of the votes of the first round, how they will yes. uh, flow. How the situation will change. I mean, uh, uh, Yulia Tymoshenko supporters, Boyko supporters, Smeshko supporters, whom will they, they vote for? It's extremely difficult to predict right now. I would not predict anything because this runoff would be totally different from the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a fresh beginning right now. Mm -hmm. We can predict that some voters of Gritsenko may go to Poroshenko, some will go to Zelensky. We may predict that a uh, large portion of the pro-Russian voters of Boyka and Vilkul may go to Zelensky because somehow they see him as um, a candidate which is closer to them. He, he few times he publicly um, uh, defended the Russian language uh, and he accentuates that there is no difference which language to speak, Russian or Ukrainian. Uh, so I think they kind of feel him feel him more than, than Poroshenko. Uh, then Yulia Tymoshenko's votes, I don't think they will flow anywhere. They will ignore uh, the, the vote. Why? Because uh, she has a very, very tough core. Uh, if you look at all the elections, she always has this 10%, which are always hers. Why? Because she has the most comprehensive net of uh, the, her party. This is the real, the only real structured party in Ukraine is Batkivshina. So she has this party in all each small village. She has the Batkivshina party. That's why she has this 10 percent who are mm, just totally the, her uh, electorate and they will not vote for anyone else, I guess. So these votes are kind of lost. So the, the big question is who will be able to motivate uh, their voters to come and actually vote? 
and it, whether the um, uh, who will be able to show that they are they are gonna be presidents of the whole Ukraine. This is the very important uh, thing, you know, because um, Zelensky. I'm not sure how Zelensky can uh, assure voters of Poroshenko that he's gonna be their president as well. well I'm not sure how Poroshenko can convince Zelensky's voters that he's gonna be their president as well if he wins. So this is the big question: how they're gonna mm -hmm. behave? Well, some experts they do um, well request from Zelensky to present his team so they can actually get to know uh, people that he want to bring into politics, into his office. Can this um, save him from probably losing the debate with Poroshenko? Because I think Poroshenko wants to eat him alive, so to say, during the debate. I think that, of course, he can avoid part of criticism of incompetency, Zelensky. Uh, if he presents uh, a team of really competent people, so he will kind of lower this criticism of him being incompetent. Mm -hmm. um, however, we still don't have answers from him and his public appearances have been extremely weak. Even in prepared interviews, which he had on his friendly one plus one channel, I don't know if we can call, but in his friendly channel he had some prepared interviews, and even there he looked, uh, he looked weak. What do you mean weak. by weak? He didn't have any enough arguments. He didn't have direct answers. He was not sure how to answer. You could see it by his mimics. Maybe it's my subjective impression. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna present it as kind of impression of all Ukrainians. But, uh, and this calls uh, for Zelensky to present his team, present his standpoints, are not only coming from Ukraine. We actually saw in uh, last days uh, calls from the higher levels in Germany. Uh, I think it was one of the leaders of uh, Christian Democrats, the ruling party, who said that Zelensky has to present uh, his, his standpoints on foreign policy, uh, his team and what he's gonna do because we know nothing and this is scary and this is not what Ukraine can afford in the times of war and uh, that was said from uh, Germany not, mm -hmm. not from me and but I agree with this point it, it's great to have a peaceful country and get make experiments this know? is very but interesting how the situation is going to unfold the situation is very controversial but let's see uh, how things will keep unfolding uh, during the announcement of the final results of the Central Election Commission and also so during the second round uh, on April 21st. So far, I thank you for your interesting and valuable comments and thank you for being a guest today in our Thanks studio. Thanks for having me. That was Gosha Tehi, Ukraine Forum's correspondent to New York. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Alice Gerjuk. Goodbye.